All right, Detective Jazzy, what the heck? All right, missed you. <laughs> What's up, gays? Straight to another days. It's Mally. I'm back with another episode of Lady in Mystery. And now is today, the day, the grand plan. None of those words were in the right order, but we're just going to get right into this because I'm super excited. <laughs> as soon as the sun went up, everything went according to plan. Hisu wore a green long coat and practiced saluting gracefully over and over. Juhi kept giving a sigh with a skeptical look. Then she ended up grabbing Hisu's wrist. That's it. I'm coming with you. <laughs> oh, I love her. I said no. Hisu was adamant. Juhi knows she's just worried about Hisu for no reason, but Juhi took the clothes away from Hisu. The more she thought about it, the more convinced she gets that she shouldn't let Hisu go alone. That grammar was hard to read through. Hisu got into trouble when she was investigating the case for that boy, Jae Ho. That's a name I haven't heard in forever. Hisu would have already been dead if Juhi hadn't ridden a horse. Yeah. <laughs> Hisu didn't have any plan in front of Gum Guy Gang, but Hisu just keeps saying she's okay. If we get to be in danger, then I'll push you two and run away alone. Is it going to be okay then? <laughs> I know you won't actually do that, but all right. But what if Zheng Pyong Ho sees your face? How would he know who I am even though he sees me? I'm really not sure if it's a good idea. Hisu debated a little, then took off a long coat and put it over Juhi. Hisu grabbed her hand softly and made her hold the clothes near her chin and looked here and there with a frown. Hisu put away her hands after covering everywhere except for the eyes. <laughs> Did I just bundle up my girlfriend? <laughs> oh, she's gonna fucking kick my ass. Then you should wear this long coat. You're going to be Zheng Pyong Ho's wife. What? Hey! No, she's supposed to be my wife. How dare you? <laughs> do you think you can do it? Of course. When Juhi answered more confidently on purpose, Hisu called Wu Sung in, who was waiting outside. Come in, let's practice. We changed the role of Zheng Pyong Ho's wife. Okay, brother. It's gonna be you. <laughs> well, that would be fucking hilarious. Okay, piano's going insane in the background. What the heck? We choreographed our moves right away as if we were becoming clowns. Hisu covered her face with a fan like a really graceful Yangban and tried to give orders only with her hands, flinching her eyebrows. And Wu Sung practiced angrily looking around and scolding people as if he became a henchman. Hisu mesmerizingly flipped her hand, pointing at Juhi, and then shook off her sleeves. This is Professor Zheng's wife. We would like to get the key to his office. <laughs> Good afternoon. When Juhi nervously lowered her head, Hisu pressed her hand in the air and gave a signal. A little slower, a little later. After repeating about ten times, Hisu finally nodded. After finishing practice, Hisu gave the same warning over and over. I can't guarantee that we can pass the gate without any trouble. If we're unlucky, we might not even be able to get into the Translation Academy. I know. If that happens, we should just turn around and run away without any signal. Don't forget. Okay. <laughs> what? All right. Sure, that was so convoluted. When we finally arrived at the Translation Academy, it was exactly noon. Juhi lowered her head, pressing her chest that's beating so fast with her fist. A gatekeeper came running without giving them enough time to prepare. Who's this? Oh, great. Thank you, Logo. What? We should be fine, I think. I don't know. Things are gonna happen. <laughs> are we switching? No, we're still... I think we're in Juhi's point of view still? I think so. What is this? Marimba's, I think? Okay. We're here as Professor Zheng Pyong Ho's guest. Go get anyone from inside. Hisu pointed with her chin so naturally that the gatekeeper got dumbfounded for a while. Hisu was more demanding than when he was practicing, and a gatekeeper came back in on impulse. Juhi could see Hisu holding her breath, and Juhi held her breath as well. After a while, a middle-aged professor came from inside. Okay, this is intense as shit! Calm down with your mallets over there! He looked into their appearance and opened his mouth without a hint of a smile. Professor Zheng is not in the office right now. He went outside, so you should come back at night. He seemed a little disgusted. As Hisu said, Zheng Pyong Ho might really have a lot of guests like us usually. The professor was about to go in, but then Wu Sung stopped him. Wait, you can't just go back like that. I told you he's not here. We didn't come here to meet him. She is Professor Zheng's wife. We came here to this translation academy for an errand, so please, walk us to his office. Huh? The professor was surprised and looked at Juhi. Juhi calmly bowed. Professor bowed to Juhi as well and then touched his hair as if he's flustered. 
Nice to meet you. What brought you here? My husband said he needs something, but he left it in this translation academy. So I came here for him since he's busy. Can I get the key, please? The professor frowned and just looked at Juhi. Juhi was grabbing her long coat and she was getting tensed. Oh, baby, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Hisu said we should run away if something happens. Juhi wanted to look back on the path they came, but she didn't want to look suspicious, so she just stared at the professor. When she couldn't even spread her toes properly, the professor tilted his head. Hisu stepped forward and pushed Juhi back. Are you going to make her stand on the street all day? Are you going to go in and search through Professor Zheng's stuff for us? Please, do that if you can. What we need is Mrs. Zheng's letter, her clothes, promissory notes, and... Yusu's expression was all subtly negative. It's hard to say yes when he uses the expression like, search through or Mrs. Zheng's stuff. The professor, standing like a rock, hesitated a little and then shook his head. No, no, I'll give you the key, but you shouldn't touch the ledger inside. We did it. That doesn't surprise me. It was pretty solid-ish for a plan. We almost ran straight to the office. Hisu hurriedly unlocked the door, Wu Sung took out the lock, Ju He pushed the door. As soon as they got into Zheng Pyeong Ho's room, which is still dark even during the day, Ju He pushed the door closed with her back and took off the long coat. Don't do that! Don't fucking do that! We're not out of the woods yet! Oh my god, put that back on! You worry me so much. Ugh. I thought my heart was going to explode. It's going as we planned, but we might get caught. We should do it as fast as we can. I'll go inside, so Wusung and Miss Juhi, you should look through the desk, outside the desk, and the drawer. As Hisu was feeling rushed, she called Juhi's name again like she used to call Juhi. Juhi was looking at Hisu's back, disappeared inside the room, fluttering his clothes, Juhi turned around as well. There were all kinds of papers stacked up for years, waiting for someone to find out. Where should we look first? Oh! Oh, I actually get to do things. Well, I'm gonna save because I'm paranoid. This keeps making a noise. Here? Juhi opened the window just in case. <sighs> okay, never mind. That was dumb. But there was nothing special. Juhi saw a person passing by outside. She got startled and closed the door. Okay. Here? There are all kinds of foreign books on the bookshelf. He had books about Chinese, the most his translator. Juhi opened every single one of them, but there was nothing special. Okay, here. The desk was so messed up with all the papers. Most of them were related to government work, and Juhi could see Zheng Pyeong Ho's handwriting on some papers. It would be helpful to know his handwriting. Juhi quietly took one of the papers. Here? The drawer has a lock on it, so it's not open. Okay, that's fair. So does the chest. Is it locked? Yes, Wu Sung. I just said that. Wu Sung came and pulled the drawer, then took his hand off. Juhi grabbed the inkstone and broke the drawer at once. Baby knows how to lockpick! Girl, you got my heart already. Wu Sung freaked out and turned around. You can't break it like that. <laughs> I think she just did. He'll know someone broke in anyway. <laughs> I love her. I love her so much. There were some old letters in the drawer. When Juhi opened it, it was when his wife was introduced to him. Even though her family is ruined, she is still a woman from a Yangban family. The only drawback is that she lost her parents at an early age. But she would be perfect for a plebeian like you. When I told her that you wanted a quiet wedding, since you're getting married late in life, she agreed. You don't have to have a big wedding. You can just marry her. Even though he's an official, he's still a commoner. But he got married to a Yangban? And didn't even have a wedding when he's marrying a lady from a Yangban family? Wu Sung saw it in front. Okay, this must be the right thing because it's the only locked thing, and I think that's the only thing I can check here, other than what I've already seen. So he was living so well. I, I guess. There was nothing more in the drawer. Juhi closed the drawer. Then... A loud noise came from inside. Oh, fuck. It's where Hisu was. No, 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 no. Juhi was astonished and ran into the room. Shit, shit, shit. Hisu was sitting on the floor with something on her hand in the dark room. You made me think we got caught. What happened? Juhi took the thing Hisu was holding away from Hisu's hand. What Hisu found was an old garment. But one side of the clothes were stiff and hard to straighten. There was some dark red cloth on it. Do not tell me. Fucking Zhang kept my dad's, like, fucking old clothes that he's staying with. Ew. But I mean, in Bates Motel, Norman did keep the belt of a guy that he murdered. Alright, fine. Soon Juhi realized what it was. It's blood. Yeah, yeah, figure that pretty fast. How? Isi frowned as if she just swallowed a needle and lowered her head. This was the clothes my father was wearing right before he died. Okay, I wasn't sure. But I was right about that? What the heck? And when Hisu spread the clothes, hairs were falling to the ground. Hairs must have been wrapped up with those clothes. Juhi freaked out and looked at the floor. Even though Juhi just saw it, she didn't know what just happened. 
Juhi got stunned and didn't know what to do, and then she quickly bent over. While she was sweeping all the hair, she got angry. Zhang Pyong Ho, that crazy bastard. Why is he even keeping these clothes and hair after what he's done to him? You know, they didn't explain that in Bates Motel either, so I don't know. Juhi got worried and looked at Hisu anxiously. But Hisu wasn't sitting on the floor that long. Hisu got up right away and started searching through the drawer. It came from this drawer. I think he's keeping all the related things in here. Zhang Pyong Ho would be in Zheng Huso by now, but he's going to realize soon that something is off. They didn't have enough time. Thinking that they didn't know when he's going to come back made her move faster searching through his drawer. Then, a letter wrapped in red paper came out from the drawer. Ow, thanks. It was so obvious that it was something important. Hisu carefully unwrapped the paper. There was another list of things. Hisu hurriedly pulled out the list she had and compared it. The handwriting was exactly the same. Right. Well, we already had this hunch, didn't we? Zheng Pyeongho's stuff. They did guess, but it really was completely his stuff. I think there is another letter there. What does it say? As I got up folding the clothes, Hisu cleared his throat a couple of times and started reading, skipping here and there. The top part and the bottom part was cut, so I'm not sure. I'm just going to read the part I can see here. Uh, pictures, I got the empty picture and sent it. I only put Kim Hong Du's stamp on it. If he gets it, he'll know what that means. Hisu looked up with a curious face. She looked up Juhi as if she was asking for help. Wait, Kim Hong Du is the most famous painter these days. I heard that some of his paintings are worth over a hundred young. Juhi didn't know when she was living in Northern Village, but with only one to two poon, normal people can have a nice meal. Ten poon becomes one jun, and ten jun becomes one young. I'll take your word for it, and Kim Hong Du's painting is worth a hundred young. It's because some young mans who like to play with money spent all their money on paintings, potting plants, and western books. But why an empty picture, not just a normal picture? Isn't that just a blank canvas? When Juhi was lost in thought, Hisu was frowning with the same face. I don't know well, but does an empty painting with only a stamp on it mean that he only put a stamp on the empty paper? I guess so. The stamp should be put on last after finishing the painting, but he just put the stamp on the paper first and sent it to Prince Zhang Peng. And if that stamp belongs to the best painter, Kim Hong Du, as Juhi listened to Hisu, she started to think of this situation as more and more complicated. An empty painting. Empty painting? If he sees it, he'll know what that means. If Prince Zheng Peng would know what that would mean, then we should also be able to know what that means. No, not necessarily, because a signal is a signal regardless. What does it mean to send an empty painting, unless that's a universal sign for something? Again, you don't have the access to that code. Maybe this one? Maybe getting the stamp on the empty paper means that he was going to make Kim Hong Du draw the painting later. The stamp should be put on last after finishing the painting, but it actually doesn't really matter if you put the stamp first and then draw or the other way around. Well, yeah, because a stamp is a stamp and you could just put that on regardless. What if he just got the stamp on the empty paper first and then was about to make Kim Hong Du draw the painting earlier? Did I get this right? I don't know. Did you think so too? That's exactly what I thought. Oh, wow. I just kind of puzzled that out. Okay. After a while, Hisu held her throat and started sorting out what happened. I'm sure he just got the stamp on the empty paper first and then was going to make Kim Hong Du draw the painting later. D did we not just say- Okay, I can see that. Zheng Pyong Ho was sending precious things to Prince Zheng Kung as a bribe, but the thing about bribing is that you never know if the receiver would actually do their favor or not. So it is two separate people, that is confirmed. So he was being smart. Well, that just doesn't- I feel like the names are so similar that it can be confusing plot-wise, but I guess it's fine. Yes, among all the things he had sent, that empty painting was the most expensive one. It isn't worth anything as it is, but if that painter draws a picture, then it becomes worth over a hundred young, or nyung. It's like a blank bill. Or like a blank check, right? But it just becomes a piece of paper if the receiver refuses it. I think he would refuse it. I mean, he seemed very frugal considering that he even had an empty folding screen in his room. And Hisu got astonished and stopped. An empty folding screen? Wait. So that empty folding screen was meant to be painted on. And there were two red stamps on there, right? That's where we're going with this? As Hisu was saying, then Juhi started fumbling her memory. If you think about it, there was a folding screen in the room, but there was no picture on it, so she thought it was a little weird when she saw that. When they caught her eyes, they knew they were thinking without saying anything. Then that folding screen is... For sure. That's the empty painting that Zhang Pyong Ho gave him. I'm sure most of the things on the list would have gone already. After the owner died, they would have started selling things from the most expensive things. 
Also, since the servants are all running away, they would have gotten anything that can be worth anything. But that folding screen was still there, because that was just an empty folding screen so the servant didn't know its worth. Then that's... Yes, that's the only evidence we have left! We have to go back to that house right away! Hisu hurriedly took some papers and some ledgers and closed the drawer. Then there was a rumbling sound from outside. Shit! I think they're back. You think? Juhi got surprised and looked outside through a chink in the door. It was Jung Pyung Ho standing outside. Oh, shit. Uh, Juhi got startled and stepped back. Put, put the thing back on. Put it back on. Put it back on. Oh my god, put it back on. And Wu Sung stepped forward and started to rip off the window right away. Let's go through the window. Okay, crazy, let's go. We can jump off the wall before they come in here. Yeah, Juhi has experience jumping off walls. If he heard that his wife has come, then there will be at least a short amount of time until he comes to this room. He is a human anyway. Juhi grabbed Wu Sung's hand and jumped off the window. She jumped off at once, even in a skirt, but Hisu couldn't dread well at once, so it got delayed a little. But after jumping off the wall, Juhi felt that she somehow made it. Now if she goes around, she can manage to get out. Run! And when they were about to get out of the alley, they heard the footsteps of the people in the front, and a group of servants cut us off exactly at the alley they were heading to. And Zhang Pyong Ho walked towards them through them. Do you really think that you can just walk away like that after what you've done? Zhang Pyong Ho tilted his head and smiled grimly. I knew you were going to come here. Fuck! Fuck! No! No! Oh my god! Oh, we're so fucked. Oh, we're so fucking fucked. Ah! No, it's gonna be okay. We're gonna figure something out, right? We're gonna figure something out. Okay, now we're back in my point of view. Okay, I figured that. Oh, fuck. I knew you were going to come here. Zhang Pyong Ho touched his beard and slowly looked at me. I was covering my face with a fan, but I felt like he could see through. Should we go inside and talk? We can have some tea. Now that I saw it, he didn't bring all the servants with him. It was only with the servants from the Translation Academy. He left his henchmen at Zhang Huso. What? Hi, saxophone! Nice of you to show up! He's purposely talking to me and dragging time, which means he's different right now. In other words, if we stay here longer, it's going to be really dangerous for us. I looked up and looked around the back of Zhang Pyong Ho again. There were some servants who weren't even carrying wooden sticks. They were nothing. What should I do? What the hell should I do? For a moment, I felt like my blood was boiling. My eyes felt warm and my heart started to beat really fast. This saxophone does not fit in with what's happening right now. What the fu- Okay. This feels like I should be like waltzing with Juhi right now, not fucking staring down my- Okay. Alright, I can't even tell if you can't even hear it this much on the system. Oh my god. If I'm just going to take care of Jung Pyong Ho, then maybe I can do it here. Maybe I don't have to think complicated about it. Ah! What the? Ugh! Okay, you're showing me in my old house, I get it! Ugh! That hurts my ears. <sighs> when I was looking sideways, barely breathing through my chest, I saw a rock with a sharp edge. It was the size of half of a baby's head. That's a weird metaphor. And the edge was so sharp that it can easily pierce the skin. It's not just a soft stone made out of random sand. It's a hard rock broken off from the wall. I would break the guy's skull in a second. I looked at Zheng Pyong Ho again. Zheng Pyong Ho was smiling mysteriously at this, he still tensed. I didn't read that right at all. Then my eyes unconsciously headed toward the rock. Then, I caught Juhi's eyes. Juhi's eyes looking at me were bigger than ever. I... I once thought that she would interrupt me as she wants and ruin my plans when I didn't even ask her to interrupt me. But now I can't ask her to move as I want. I dragged her into this out of my necessity. Suddenly, I thought of a story I used to hear, sitting on my father's lap a long time ago. I could live in Hanyang, but I didn't want to. Having something means that I have to start worrying about losing it at the same time. I could vaguely hear his voice, but then it faded away. And now I'm in Hanyang in my memory. Having something means not being able to be free. It's not for a person who needs revenge. Really, but... Juhi's face, making a bright smile, overlapped with a nervous face right now. You could be happy. I was looking around for a while, and then, only after Zheng Pyong Ho exclamatory screamed, I came to senses. When I looked up, Zheng Pyong Ho was looking at Wu Sung, not me. He pointed the finger at Wu Sung and frowned. You! Get away from him! You are the one from the past that- Before Zheng Pyong Ho even finished his sentence, before anyone could stop him, Wu Sung came at Pyong Ho right away. 
Five to six people were coming at Wu Sung, but he didn't stop and just pushed every one of his shoulders and he swung his fist like a beast. What the? Okay, we need to help him. No, I'm not going to let him die. Juhi and I could get out of the alley in the meantime, but we couldn't just leave without Wu Sung. When we were waiting for him and getting worried, Wu Sung hurled all the servants with his bare hands and fought them all alone by himself. At the same time, a large drop of rain fell down on my gat. Soon the rain got so much heavier that I couldn't even believe it, even though I was watching it with my own eyes. It was an unprecedented heavy rain that started the rainy season. Wait, what? Wait, hold on, what happened? Did he escape? What? When we examined Wu Sung after coming back to the tavern, his body was a mess. There were a lot of scars and wounds and some of his body was swollen. Yeah, but at least he's alive. What happened? Where's... Where's the guy? While applying ointment on him, I couldn't help but slap him on his back. When I slapped him on his back, Wu Sung shrugged his shoulders. Why are you so stupid like that? You could have died. Because I thought he recognized me. I thought there were thunders outside, but when I heard it again, it was the clatter of horse's hoof. The outside had been so loud for some time now, and Makwa opened the door, soaked wet in the rain. Hi, little one. It's crazy outside. The river is about to flood. The village under the ridge would be flooded. The river? This rain must be so heavy. Tell me about it. The raindrops are the size of my fist. <laughs> I heard that all the walls and houses were falling down. Even the prison fell down too, so I heard a brutal criminal broke out. What? What? A brutal criminal? Well, I'm not really sure about it. Oh, Makwa. Some say a brutal criminal broke out, and some say that Iljin broke out of the prison on purpose. Wait, Iljin was in prison? Anyway, with everything happening, they're going to seal off Hanyang for a few days. That's why there are all the people running around on horses. I came to senses with what Makwa just said. Wait, they're blocking the capital? Yes, they only take people from outside and block people from going out of the capital for about three days. No, I have to go to Prince Zhang Peng's house and check the folding screen right away. Prince Zhang Peng's house is outside the capital, but it's right outside the capital, so... It's close. I can't believe I can't go there when it's right there. There's no servant at all in the house right now, and I have to leave that house like that without anyone keeping it for three days? Zhang Peng Ho would know right away what's been missing as soon as he searches his room. If he takes time, then before long, he could even guess where we would head next. And I'm not sure what's going to happen next. Makwa forgot to close the door when she got out. The rain was so loud from the open door. The wind kept blowing and slapping on my cheek. And soon, the rain came inside the room and made the water stay in the room. What should I do? What should... Oh! We have a choice. So we either go today to the capital... Or we should just wait until the gate opens. If we wait, then the criminal is still out there, and we we could be very well still in danger. But if we head this off now, then maybe there's still hope. Okay, let's go. I should get out of Hanyang today. I almost got him now. I can't ruin everything at this point. Let's go out. We don't have time to waste here. We should get out of Hanyang. I don't think we can. If they blocked the capital, they would have closed all the gates around Hanyang. Where would we even go out? I used to go through the south gate a lot when I have to get out of Hanyang. I went through that gate when I went to the port, Mapo or Gyeonggi. That's the gate I came in when I first came to Hanyang. God, I hope this doesn't fuck my ending with Juhi because I want her good ending first. I don't usually use the path I'm not used to. Gatekeepers on the gate usually have wanted posters with them. I didn't want to go near the gate where there are gatekeepers that I don't know well. But since Hanyang is blocked, I don't think I can use the gate this time. Wu Sung searched through the drawer and took out the old map that we first got when we first got came to Hanyang. I, I'm having trouble speaking. This is so much. Let me just take a look at the map to see if there's any way out. If we are going to use the east gate or the north gate, we have to go a long way around. Oh, I completely skipped that line. Whoops. Well, she basically said we can't go there. If we exclude the long way around and big gates, there are not many places left. Let's go through that gate. It's between the west gate and the south gate. Usually they use that gate when they carry the dead body, so not many people are using that gate. I rolled the map and put it in my back pocket and looked around. The rain didn't seem to dwindle any minute soon. I pulled out some raincoats from the storage. The raincoat made out of straw was so dusty, heavy, and looked shabby. When I looked back, Juhi didn't say anything, just stood there. I don't think it's going to block any rain. Let's hurry. Okay. That gate was much further than I thought. We walked for about one hour, but unlike what we thought, the security was really tight around that gate. The gate was almost closed. There were brick walls around the stone pillar and there were two gates on each side, 
There's no way we could get through that without the gatekeepers knowing. Even though they don't block people from outside, who would walk around in this weather? <sighs> I never thought the street would be this empty. With those two talking, my head started to get hurt. I was in the rain for too long. My cheeks started to feel numb and I couldn't feel my nose. When I looked down at my hands, they were emitting steam, and so were my arms and my shoulders. Wait, how? What? I don't think we can go out before the gate closes. Gatekeeper is going to relieve a shift. So then, those two will come out to the gate from the outside to greet the gatekeepers from inside the capital. So then the curfew bell rings, then... Suddenly my head spun so I couldn't continue. That short window when the gatekeepers are distracted, relieving a shift. When we go out at that moment, even gatekeepers wouldn't see us in this heavy rain. Then how should we wait then? It's still too early. We can't be in this rain for that long. I held my breath, listening to them. The rain was coming from inside my mouth and running down my throat. What should I do? Uh, fuck, I don't know what choice is like gonna keep us on a good ending because like I'm not trying to do revenge right now. Let's just go. Because if something just goes wrong, then I can just go back. Let's just go through whenever there's a chance. It's not going to make any difference if we just wait here. Yeah, we'll probably get sick and like die from cold or something. Also, we decided to go out of Hanyang not to drag on time. If we're going to wait every time when there's a hurdle, then we might as well just wait in the tavern until we all got old and have gray hair. Let's just go through. What? Just going out of that door? When I look at it, those gatekeepers are not always tense. If we all just run out of the gate, they'll get flustered and won't be able to follow us. It's just a small gate with only a few gatekeepers. And it's going to be a big problem if they all follow us and leave the gate off guard. Yeah, because the way that I see it, I feel like if we don't take care of this guy now, he's going to be following us forever. And then that won't be a good ending, will it? I don't know. Are you saying they won't follow us after a certain distance? It's worth a try. After a little while, we were all holding our breath. As soon as we exchanged the signal, we started to run towards the gate. Wu Sung was the fastest, and Juhi dashed out, grabbing her skirt. Then someone grabbed me by the back of my neck. What? Ow! You bastard! Where do you think you're going? Oh, I think I hit a bad ending. Yep. No outlet. Okay. Okay. So it's a good thing I saved there. Okay. I'm gonna see you back at the choice then. Okay. Good, it stopped us pretty early on. Let's wait until the night then. Let's wait until night. We don't know what's going to happen if we just go through. As soon as I thought that, the wind blew on the back of my neck. My neck got so cold. Okay, then let's just wait here no matter what. I just nodded instead of answering. I'll go out and find the folding screen before Zhang Pyongho. I was thinking that my eyelids were getting so heavy. I could see my father waving his hand at me from a distance. And then my body fell backward. Wait, what? And then I never got to wake up ever. Wait, what? Is this another ending? Did I die? This is still no outlet. Okay. Well then, come on. Give me. We're back here now. So that that's just no outlet no matter what. Okay. So what happens if we wait until the gate opens? Because I want this with Juhi. I want the good ending. There's no way we can get out of Hanyang tonight. I've experienced similar situations several times before. This is why it's a good thing that I chose those save points, because I had a feeling that was going to happen. When I was investigating the Adipokery case, I got too rushed and wasn't able to see anything around us. I didn't think at all in the long term, and I couldn't. But if I haven't given up and moved on every moment, I wouldn't have anything I've achieved today. I was thinking of smacking Zheng Pyeongho with a rock earlier, but then I wouldn't have been in Posheng by now, tied on the rack. What should we do? Do you think we should jump off the rampart and go to that place now? Wu Sung rushed me anxiously. The gate is closed and all the people in Hanyang are locked in here. There's no way I can get out of Hanyang, which means there's no way Zhang Pyong Ho can get out as well until the gate is open. Oh! Duh, I didn't think of that. We can just wait and go there faster than anyone when the time comes. But I'll have cl clear information about what happened after three days. That's the risk we should take. Because I died otherwise! Even while I was talking, the rain got heavier. I could open my eyes in the middle of the night. Oh, don't tell me we had another ending. I could hear the rain was still so heavy even if I'm not trying to listen. But it became much less than earlier. Maybe the rain will stop tomorrow. Wu Sung was asleep curled up since he was injured, and Juhi was lying sideways toward the wall. Maybe it's because of the weather, but I felt cold in the room. I went out of the room. Oh yeah, because that's smart right now. A small kitchen connected to the room was only used when they made a fire. When I got in, there were still some embers. I put a couple of small woods in the furnace and squatted down. The fire started spreading. 
I watched the fire and leaned my face on my arm. My father really greeted him as his old friend. He didn't even know that he would end up dead like that. Given that I hadn't heard of Jung Pyung Ho's name and my mother's reaction at that time, Jung Pyung Ho would have left the hometown for over 10 years. My father was friends with him before he left. Then how young were they when they first started to be friends? I took out the papers and shined the light on them. A bribe list of Jung Pyung Ho and some mysterious list of people. Boat tickets that go out of this country. Why did my father even search through his friend's stuff who came back to his hometown in a long time? And why did he have to pull that out? He would have tried to report him, obviously. That's why Zheng Pyong Ho had to do everything he could to attack my father. And then, I noticed the letters on the tickets. A couple and one child. If the tickets were for people written on it, then it wouldn't be Zheng Pyong Ho's. No, that would have been us. He didn't have a wife then. And according to what we researched, he didn't have any wife or a kid then. If Zheng Pyong Ho got that ticket for himself, then it should have been for only one person. No, that's for us. It's even less likely to be my father's. Wait, why wouldn't it? He never wanted to leave his hometown, and even if he did, it should have been a couple and two kids. Then, was the ticket Zheng Pyong Ho's? What? What? Wait. Unless he meant to leave Wu Sung behind, but then again, that's not really in character for him. But even though he got it from Zheng Pyong Ho's stuff, if it doesn't have to do with Zheng Pyong Ho, he wouldn't take it with him. I think this belongs to... If he doesn't have a wife and a... Wait. Unless he was planning to make off with me and my mother? I... It could be either. You? Does this belong to Zheng Pyong Ho? Zheng Pyong Ho happened to have tickets for someone who didn't have anything to do with him and my father took it? No, no. Then why would he fold it nicely and store it in the pocket? If this ticket is Zheng Pyong Ho's, then these tickets have nothing to do with my father or Zheng Pyong Ho. And it's highly unlikely. I think this belongs to my father. Yeah, that was the obvious choice, but I didn't go with it just in case. Then why did my father get these odd tickets? At first, I thought of something bad. My father found out that Zheng Pyong Ho was doing something bad, so he wanted to report him. And after reporting Zheng Pyong Ho, he would want to run away and hide. No, no. Then the numbers on the ticket don't add up. Then what if he wanted to make him run away to another country after reporting him? But Zheng Pyong Ho was alone at the time. The number doesn't add up again, yet none of it makes sense. Then the cracking sound came out of the furnace and the wood split up. And at the same time, I realized. They haven't met for over 10 years. They wouldn't have known each other that well. It took a few months for Juhi to know about me. No matter how close they were when they were young, it only be a couple days since they'd met again. And Zheng Pyong Ho was going back to Hanyang again. So there's no way he would show his weakness to my father that he's still single. I have a wife and a kid. He probably lied. So my father got the tickets for his family as he lied to my father. The boat tickets that my family never needed. But it's not making any sense to get the tickets for him when he was about to report him. Then I could see everything clearly. My father might have never intended to report him in the first place. When he saw the bribe list, he just realized how dangerous it is that his friend is doing. So after finding out what he was doing, he finally got these tickets. He was worried that Zheng Pyong Ho wouldn't be okay as soon as he quit the job. So he wanted him to stop doing dishonorable work and spend some time in another country with his wife and his kid. I guess... Ugh. This is really over-explained, but okay. Father. My father wasn't going to hurt Zheng Pyong Ho in the first place. These tickets are evidence. But Zheng Pyong Ho just misunderstood the situation. And look what happened to my family because of that. When I closed my eyes, I could hear the door open from the back. Juhi came in, bowing the water off her sleeves. What are you doing here alone? Could you hold me again, like you used to? Because I think I need it. Oh. Oh. She decided to sit with me anyway. Cute. I explained everything to Juhi, who's sitting next to me. Juhi listened to my story, frowning occasionally, and then gave a light sigh at the end. Do you think it would make any difference if you tell that to Zheng Pyong Ho? At this point, I don't think so, but maybe we should? I don't think so. There's a limit on feeling guilty. It wears out as if you keep rubbing against it like farmer's fingerprints. In fact, I'm very different from who I was when I first came to Hanyang. If he remained the same lifestyle for five years, I doubt that he would feel guilty about the past. Now we have two days left. After collecting all the evidence, I'll go to the Supreme Court myself and tell them everything. They won't be able to ignore it if I give them a bribe list and the actual things he gave as a bribe. When everything ends, you won't be able to live like this anymore. Do you think so? Would it be much worse than now? <laughs> Aw. It might be better than now. <laughs> what do you mean by that? How? I powerlessly tilted my head. 
I watched Juhi's face buried in the dark as the fire died down on the burnt down woods. Juhi kept touching straws with the tip of her fingers as if she was thinking what to say. It was new and kind of funny, so I put another piece of wood in the furnace. Before long, the kitchen got brighter again. Well, you're right. Maybe it'll get better. I mean, I came to Hanyang without any money, but look at me now, living so well with only five years, with good eyes. I think I'm destined to be... Oh. Hi. Why are you smiling at me like that? When I looked back on Juhi while poking the fire, she was looking at me with a familiar face. She laughed with a frown on her face and shook her head. You're such a fraud. I don't have any jewelry anymore. <laughs> That's right, I did that. <laughs> As the wind blew, the door was shaking. Oh, what? Moment over? Oh, I kind of wanted to kiss you again. The rain was dwindling. What? Wait. Oh. The gate of the capital opened on the third morning around the time the bell rings to notify the end of the curfew hour. Oh, the gate's open now. Okay, well, now that the gate's open, I feel like we're going to launch straight into pursuing that, um, I guess, the empty screen. So I'm going to call that one there. Wow. This was... This was so all over the place. Like, I feel like I've said that a lot lately, but it really was. Like, we had the insanity that was basically fighting off our enemy and his men. And then we go back to the tavern and we finally, like, start puzzling things out. And I think we're still good on the route we are to, like, keep pursuing Juhi. So, I hope we're still on track for a good ending because I really, really want things to work out for us. Because, I mean, we've been through so much and, like, we're so happy together in these quiet moments like this. And I just... I want to get back to, like, the cute cuddling that we were doing earlier, because that was so sweet and adorable, so, um, more of that, please, but, uh, thank you so much, whoever happens to be watching this, and honestly, thank you so much for all the support on this series, I, this series has been, I think this is my longest series on the channel, and I've been having such a good time, so, thank you for watching, it really does mean a lot to me, it's a lot easier to record something when you know that other people love it as much as you do, so. Thank you so much, whoever happens to be watching this. Like, comment, subscribe, it really does help me out. And until next time, bye!